Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? Happy Wednesday. I hope that your week has started and is now half over and it has been fantastic. Um, I have to say that I am really happy with how January reading has been progressing for me. I have read some really amazing books so far to start 2019 and I am super excited when I get to share them with you guys um, like I am going to do today. Now today is going to be... Um, video three in my read and review series. And if you guys are just new to my channel or have forgotten, um, I am now breaking down my sort of wrap ups into these little tiny mini videos where I review three books that I have read. I am rotating this year between reading a book that is coming out in 2019 or has come out in 2019 with a book from my TBR shelf. So that can be any book that came out in 2018 or before. Trying to work down that TBR shelf. And I actually have to say, I'm plugging along. I'm very pleasantly happy with how my reading has gone. And the three books I'm gonna tell you about today are fantastic. Um, small caveat, you know I like a dark book. All three of these books have darker undertones. So I'm just giving you a heads up there, but Get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, because you are going to want to read these books. They were freaking fantastic. So let's start with the one that is coming out the soonest. And this one arrives on shelves on January 29th, 2019, which is next Tuesday. And that is We Cast a Shadow by Maurice Carlos Ruffin. So I want to thank One World for sending me this. They sent me this actually a while ago, but I have been patiently waiting to read it closer to when the publication date was because I wanted to share my thoughts with you. I did cheat a little bit and sort of read bits and pieces earlier, but I have officially finished it and it is a whopper of a book. Um, and it is being blurbed by Roxane Gay as a book that you must read. So if that, like for me, is a big point, there you go. So what is We Cast a Shadow? This is a racial satire set in sort of a slightly alternated United States where racism is just out there on the front um, no one actually um, tries to hide or pe uh, beat around the bush. It is out there. And our main character, who is nameless, is a, uh, is a black man who works as a lawyer in a law firm. Now, the novel starts with him and two other black men uh, competing for a job that is permanent at the law firm. And it is just as a degrading spectacle as... Um, I think Mr. Ruffin wants it to be because he's trying to make a point. He's trying to make a point regarding sort of how race is viewed in his novel. And boy, does he. Now, really, the premise of this book is that our main character has a son. Now, his, he is married to a white woman, so his son is of mixed descent. And he also, the son has these birthmarks on his face, these dark patches and all over his body. His father, our main character, is obsessed with the idea that he needs to have this surgery to change the melanin in his skin to make him white. And it turns out that in this world, a lot of people in the um, different ethnic communities have different surgeries that are offered up to make them look white. Most drastic is to change their entire skin tone, but there's a lot of stuff um, for changing nose shape, eye shape, um, all sorts of stuff. And what our main character is trying to do is save the money. He wants to become a partner in the firm because he wants to put the money down so that he can get this procedure for his son with the intention of removing his son sort of from all of the racial barriers he sees in his future. Now, our main character is super duper flawed, but there are a couple things. One, he truly loves his son. I think that that's really, really important in this novel. He really feels that the decisions he makes and the way he treats his son in his world are to better him, to give him a better option as far as where his future will go. However, that being said, I have never struggled so much to like a main character as I do the main character of this book. And I think that that's intentional because he says and or thinks a lot of awful things. There's a lot of internal racism that he deals with that he sort of is just taking as day-to-day -day fact 
um, and some of the stuff that he says or issues he has um, with his son um, are hard. They're very hard to stomach, but I think that's the brilliance of the novel. Um, there's a whole section about um, bleaching your skin and uh, different um, creams to do that. His wife, um, our main character's wife, the mom of Nigel, the son, is white, and she doesn't have the same, um, we're going to call them hiccups, as her husband. Um, and their dynamic and their conversations regarding what they expect for their son is, are, is one of the very compelling parts of this book. But in the other aspects are he wants to become part of the law firm. So there's a lot of societal discussion. Um, he is more or less used as a racial pawn in an attempt to get a hospital to sign with the law firm. And he goes along and sort of creates situations to make his law firm appear more racially diverse. Um, it is a brilliant book. It is a hard book to read. There, it does shine a magnifying glass with a spotlight on certain things that are currently going on in the world in which we live. So be really prepared for a novel that is going to make you think, is going to make you uncomfortable, that is going to sort of bring realizations to you regarding different aspects of society, because we're not always too far from what this novel represents. This book is freaking brilliant. Um, I can't say any more about it. I want all of you to read it. It comes out, it has a beautiful cover. Um, the uh, print cover that I saw um, on uh, Mr. Ruffin's Instagram is silver with this totally fantastic cover. And um, it is worth it. And I want you all to read it. And then I want you all to talk to me about it because it is a book for discussion. It is a book for change. It is a book of pointing out and arguing and agreeing and creating and intellectual discourse. It is that amazing. Um, it's hard for me to say more because I don't want to any, ruin anything in the plot. And I've talked a lot about it already. Um, but please, please put this on your radar. Please pick it up. I think if you are a fan of Paul Beatty's The Sellout, you'll definitely uh, appreciate this book. It had a lot of notes of Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison in it to me at times too. The language, um, yeah, it's it's really good. <laughs> I don't know if I could say any more. So that's We Cast a Shadow by Maurice Carlos Ruffin. Again, thank you, thank you to One World for sending me this early copy. It will arrive on bookshelves uh, on Tuesday, January 29th, which is just around the corner. The next book I read is, I believe, my first nonfiction of 2019. I'm pretty sure it is. And that is the phenomenal memoir, Heavy, by Ki... Kiese Lehman. Now, I listened to this on the audiobook, and I practice and practice and practice how to say Kiese's name, and I know I'm not saying it exactly right, but I will say this is a fantastic, fantastic memoir and a fantastic audio because he reads it himself. This book starts as a discussion or a conversation that he is going to have with his mother. Turns out he is raised by a woman who is very smart. She is working on getting her PhD, but they sort of live in this state of poverty. And she suffers from some um, addictive behaviors that you learn more about as the story goes on. He is very bright, but he, is, he struggles with sort of, sort of the stuff that goes on with being a black man, an educated black man. Also, there's a lot of stuff here about body image, food, using food as an escape, weight. Um, heavy has a lot of different um, connotations and meaning in regards to what this is. It's not only his weight, but how that affects his health, how that affects his stamina, his self-esteem, but also it's the weight of his family and the expectations of his family as life goes forward. Um, he makes poor decisions, but he Never do you feel sorry, never does he come across as feeling sorry for himself. That's probably a better way to put that. But what he does is he sort of just brings you into his life, brings you into sort of the decisions, brings you into this very problematic relationship with his mother. This is a book, this probably has a lot of trigger warnings in it because it deals with a lot of family stuff, a lot of different types of abuse. 
Um, but it is brilliant. It deals with, you know, coming into your own as a man. It comes into coming into your sexuality. Um, it comes into owning your body, knowing what you're going to do with it, making decisions to make it a certain way. Um, you guys, this book, this memoir is amazing. It is really, really good. Um, there were points that I was in tears while I was listening to it. And there were points where I was just rooting for him. And it's funny enough, I have read his novel. He had a novel come out. It was called Long Division. And I think it was on, um, because it was on the tournament of books one year, I read it. And I remember reading it and thinking, gosh, this book has a lot. It was very um, experimental in form. Uh, but I thought, he's an amazing writer, and I want to know what he does next. And then he does this memoir, and it's like, oh my gosh. You guys, this book is freaking fantastic. If you're into memoirs, I highly recommend this. But again, it is dark, and it deals with a lot of tough subject matter, but beautifully written. Um, I was going to read you guys just sort of the first sentence of this book, um, because I think it's amazing. But it's, so it's titled Ben, Ben, B-E-E-N. Um, I did not want to write to you. I wanted to write a lie. I did not want to write honestly about black lies, black thighs, black loves, black laughs, black foods, black addictions, black stretch marks, black dollars, black words, blacks abuse, black blues, black belly buttons, black winds, black beans, black bends, black consent, black parents, or black children. I did not want to write about us. I wanted to write an American memoir. And that's absolutely what he does. It is brilliant. So good, you guys. Heavy by uh, Kiese Lehman. Um, and I'm sorry, I really did practice on his first name, but I knew that it was going to be tough for me. I'm awful with names. So I finished these two books, which they're actually an amazing compendium for each other. So if you read them both together, you'll really, I, I got a lot out of reading them back to back. And I thought, you know what? I want to read something completely different in a book. Okay, guys, I'm going to try this again. And I uh, don't normally splice my videos, but I did not do a very good job with the third book. So I'm starting over. <laughs> um, I want to tell you about the amazing novel, Savage Conversations by Leanne Howe. This comes out on February 5th. 2019 from Coffee House Press. This book has so much to say. Um, I picked it up because I wanted something different and it had just come in and it was really just sort of there and spoke to me because I had seen it on Mercedes channel as a book that she was excited about and I couldn't get it out of my head so I had to read it. Now what is this book about? It says on the back that it's about the trials of Mary Todd Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln's wife, and it is. The premise Mary Todd Lincoln, at the end of her life, was put into an insane asylum because of many reasons and driven by her son who put, uh, testified against her and put her there. Now, part of and what inspired this novel was this conversation that she supposedly had with a character that in this book is called the Savage Indian. Now, there was an event in history where Abraham Lincoln put a series of, I want to say it's 36, but... I want to make sure, 38 um, Dakota Indians hung them due to supposedly they had attacked this white community. And it is still considered, according to this, the um, largest mass execution in United States history. And there's this idea that Leanne goes forward with is that this action by Abraham Lincoln haunts Mary Todd Lincoln. And she has conversations with this um, character Savage Indian. This book is different. It's like poetry, but it's also like a play, but it's also very metaphorical. The, the rope that has hung the Indians has sort of its own voice and its own sections. Very sparse prose at times, very poetic prose at times, very moving, very dark, and then also a lot of reflection by this character. Now, Leanne um, Ho is, let me see, she's a member of the Choctaw Nation, and she is currently a distinguished professor of American literature at the University of Georgia. Um, and her, the character Savage Indian sort of reflects on this mass murder and how that affected the Native American population. 
Mary Todd is very reflective. She goes back and forth. She talks about her family. She talks about her husband. She talks about the fact that most of her children passed. There is some fascinating sort of ideas thrown in here and conversations about how she was as a mother, how she was as a wife. Was she jealous of other people? Um, and then also the rope, I think I've sort of alluded to this, but the rope gives it a historical aspect. The rope that hung the Indians has its own voice. Um, again, this, it's poetry, it's a play, it's prose, it's everything. It is really, really good. I don't know how to explain it because it's a different type of book. You probably have read very little like this, um, but I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was intellectually stimulating. I thought it was tragic. I thought it was heart-wrenching. Um, so that's Savage Conversations. This comes out on February 5th, 2019 by um, Coffee House Press. Please support your small independent publishers. Thank you, Coffee House, for sending me this early edition. I really appreciate it. You guys, these are three amazing, amazing, oh, I'll put the small one on top here. Amazing, fantastic books that I read. All different, all thought and you know, thought provoking, all just so good. Such good writing, such good thinking, such good inspiration. I highly recommend them all. Um, as I always say, if you are a return subscriber to my channel, thank you so much. You know I can't do this without you. If you are new to my channel, I hope you like this video. I hope all of these videos, all these books wind up on your TBR because they are certainly worth it. And until next time, I wish you happy reading and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!